Yo, 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 what's good, guys? It's your boy AP. I'm finally back. Uh, took a really long hiatus, uh, but I hopefully I'm back. Make it more um, consistent videos. Uh, today, I'm going to be starting, I don't want to call it a series, but I'm going to be making 30 videos within a shorter amount of time. I'm going to go through every NBA team and what I think they should do in the offseason. Um, it's not going to be too, it's going to be my opinions, obviously. Uh, I'm not too knowledgeable on the salary caps and all that stuff and whatever. I'm going to try to get more knowledgeable in it so I can they can be more realistic in my moves I think they should make. But, uh, yeah, so this is kind of my opinions on who they should move off of, who they should maybe get in free agency, stuff like that. So we're starting with the Hawks today. Um, the, f the biggest elephant in the room with that is you would think it's Trey Young, right? You would think that's what they need. But, like, they need to decide what the fuck they're going to do with John Collins, okay? His 2022-23 stats, he averaged 13 points, 6 rebounds, and 1.2 assists, okay? Now, he's obviously gotten significantly worse since um, even last year, really. But his best year was the 2019-2020 season when he only when he, they only played fucking 41 games. Um, so I don't really know how you – because I'm pretty sure he's making bank. I'm pretty sure he is. What's his contract looking like? He's making 25, 25 mil next this season. No, 23 mil this season, 25 next season, 26 mil, 24, 25, and then 26 mil and 25, 26 season. So I don't even know what, because nobody really wants to take that on, especially if he's not improving or. He played 71 games this year and started all 71, and those are the numbers he's putting up. I just – I don't – no, 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 no. It, it's just not – his efficiency isn't horrible, but it's not good either, like, for a big man. So I don't really know. He's not getting the free throw line enough for a big man. I just – I don't really know what – so he's either going to have to – my opinion on what they should do with him is they need to keep him, um, obviously, because I don't really think there's a trade for him out there. Um, and if a team wants him, they must really want him to take on that uh, money. So I don't really know, but uh, keep him. Hopefully he improves this year, and maybe he improves for the better, helps the team, yada, 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 finally comes into his own, da, 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 and then you – He's justified the money. Maybe I don't think that'll happen, but maybe he justifies the money. You can keep him on the contract, see how it goes, or he plays decent enough, but still doesn't really fit your team. Plays better, and maybe there's an actual trade out there for him because I don't know what else you do with him. Um, the next guy I want to talk about is Capella. Um, so I was kind of I was looking on the free agency market this summer, and there's no real like lob threat. And with if you're going to keep Trey Young, which we'll get into that too, if you're going to keep Trey Young, you need a lob threat. And I get John Collins is that. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of the pick and rolls are with Capella too, and he's a really good rebounder. So, And I didn't really find that like lob threat rebounder like that on the free agency that's not old already. Like I saw Andre Drummond, but he's not, he's not super – He's not catching lobs like that anymore, at least. Like, he's still rebounding, sure, but he only really gets his uh, rebounds and misses, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, so I think you I think you keep Compella unless you can package him in a trade, like maybe with a Collins or something, which I don't know if you want to get rid of both Trey Young's lob threats. But maybe keep Capella unless, it's, unless he's traded for, like, maybe they can find something. But then again, I keep saying that, and they got a, a big O on the bench. They got a Kongu on the bench, so... Maybe you do trade him. I don't know. And figure something out. Because I think Onyeka Kongwu is the center of the future for that team. So maybe you do trade him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you keep him for right now. That That's tough. That's tough, I guess. Maybe if the trade's there, obviously. Get a little younger or something. I don't know. But he fits Trey Young's game. Obviously, you'd like him to be able to be a little bit more versatile and actually be somewhat more of a scoring threat rather than just a lob threat. But Trey Young's made it work, I guess. Um, I'm really high on AJ Griffin, especially with the year he just had. Uh, I think he's a perfect fit next to um, Trey Young. I think there was a lot of 
when he was coming out of college, I think there was a lot of uh, worry that he was going to – his health. Cause I don't think he was that healthy, but he played – he played 72 games this year, only started 12, but he played 72 out of 82. So that's – and I don't remember him. I don't – obviously, he only missed 10 games, so he didn't have a significant injury this year. So I think that was a lot of people's worry was that he wasn't going to stay healthy, but he's shown that he has it so far at least. Um, shot 39% from three this year. Um, free throw, he didn't even shoot that many, but he shot 90%, but that's not – he didn't even shoot one free throw a game, so I don't really count that. Um, but yeah, no, he's going to be, he's going to be a nice player again uh, alongside Trey Young. But with that being said, do you trade Trey Young? Cause I have no idea whatsoever. Um, I have Bleacher Report pulled up and I'm going to talk about some of the trades that they said that they could get for Trey Young. And I like Trey in Miami. If you put him in Miami, I like that a lot. Um, the first trade they got in Miami is, um, Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, 27, 2027 first round pick and 2029 first round pick for Trey Young straight up. Well, just Trey Young, obviously. Um, I kind of like that because yes, you lose the picks, but I think they're in win now mode, especially with the run they're having now. You just holy shit. Um, you lose Duncan Robinson, and he has been playing better. Don't get me wrong, but you kind of get off that money because you were kind of if you he wasn't really playing, so you and you get off that money. Um, and with Kyle Lowry gone, um. I mean, you're just getting younger in that position. And then you can you still have Gabe on the bench and stuff as the point guard, so you just get younger. Obviously, Kyle Lauer gives you more of that veteran leadership and also like a um, defensive-minded guy too. So, And then the other trade they have for Miami is Tyler Hero, Dunk Robinson, and only the 2027 20, first-round pick. I hate that because I think now defensively they lack a lot, but a backcourt of Trey Young and Tyler Hero sounds really nice offensively alongside Jimmy Butler, bam, and maybe they find a center in free agency that's more defensive minded. That's a, that's a nice group. You can you can hide behind the defensive um deficiencies that they have in the backcourt with the three other guys that they have on the court. Um if I'm Miami and this trade happens, I'm do I'm doing the Kyle Lowry and Duncan Robinson one with the two first round picks for Trey Young just because you get younger. And I mean Duncan Robinson is eh, he's been playing a lot better, especially alongside Bam doing the uh dribble handoff games and stuff like that. But Kyle Lowry is a big hit too, but he's probably going to help you win a ring this year if you guys win a ring. And he is – but he's getting old. I think he's 35, so I would do that trade. Uh, the next team is the Bulls. Now, this is Bleacher Report, mind you. I'm I'm going off all Bleacher Report. Zach Levine and the 2027 first-round pick for Trey Young, straight up. Um, I don't really know how this helps any either team. Um, Because if I'm not mistaken – for a big man on the Bulls, you don't really give Trey Young that lob threat. Vucevic is not it. Uh, Zach Levine on the Hawks. I don't hate that for the Hawks because you get let DeJounte play the point where he should be playing. Um, be that facilitator. Levine's a scorer. Levine will probably have to play the three, though, with AJ Griffin because I think you start AJ. But they got the Hawks got a lot of young guys, though, too. They got a lot of guys on good contracts, too, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Okongwu, obviously, but I'm talking about, like, guards area. Yeah, they got A.J. Griffin till A.J. Griffin till 2026 to 2027, and his most he's making that year is $8 million. So they got, they got A.J. Griffin on a great year. Holy crap. Sadiq Bey. Is also a nice young player, and he's only making six mil a year. Well, he's making two mil this year, four mil next year, and six mil the year after that. Jalen Johnson is also a up and coming guy. I don't think he'll be anything too big, but he's a good defensive player. Um, but yeah, and Dejounte isn't making that much money either. You gotta, ah, uh, dude, I don't know if I'm wrong with saying this, but you gotta get off the Bo, uh, Boyan um or Bogdan contract. I don't like that unless he shows something. I don't know. DeAndre Hunter is making a decent amount of money too. But I think he'll he'll step up a little bit though. But anyways, I like Zach Levine in that. But then you kind of hinder A.J. Griffin because he's not going to be getting more playing time at least. He'll get about the same he has now because then you get a player that takes his position. But I don't know. I don't hate that. I don't hate this trade at all actually. But I think the Hawks win way more than the Bulls. 
because I think the Bulls are still, even with Trey in that position with the Rosen and Vucevic and Patrick Williams, I still think they're in the seven to ten range. I just I don't see them getting out of that. Uh the okay. This trade, and then as soon as they say the trade, it says, all right, let's get weird because this is super weird. The Dallas Mavericks, um, they trade Ka- Ka- let me speak, Kyrie Irving and the prospect selected with the 2023 first round pick uh, for Trey Young and a sign and trade and free agency. Um, no, I I don't know if it's just me or it just sounds seems really seems weird to me. But a pairing of Trey Young and Luca, just two super ball dominant guys, it just doesn't, it's not clicking for me. Um, maybe the Hawks get a little bit better because Kyrie, I mean, he played off the ball quite a lot in his career. So I think he can do that. So the Hawks, it kind of makes sense with Kyrie because then does Murray plays the one again. And yeah, so I guess, but that's just super, super weird. So I don't really like that. Um, the last one is the Clippers. Um, they got Eric Gordon, Terrence Mann, Bones Highland, 2028 first round pick swap and a 2029 first round pick for Trey Young. Um, you're getting rid of Eric Gordon, old, no offense to him, but you already got enough veteran guys on that team. Uh, Terrence Mann is kind of a, a miss Bones Highland. He's still upcoming too, but I mean, uh, they're in win now though. You know what I'm saying? So a pairing of Trey Young, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard with, Anybody at the four and five the serviceable guys who can play somewhat defense and shoot the ball a little bit. That's that's looking nice. So I don't hate that. But once again, there's not enough basketball to go around for them. So I don't know. That would be kind of weird. And then the other one was just Paul George for Trey Young straight up. Once again, I think the Hawks went out more. And actually, no, I think both teams do because the Hawks get their superstar. Like not saying Trey Young isn't, but Paul George has proven to be that guy even though he said he's not on this team, which I don't really – you don't have to say whoever is the guy. You didn't have to say it at all, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, Paul George for Stray Young straight up. I like Paul George alongside Murray, and then you got defensive guys and stuff like that. So, And I think Collins becomes a little bit more of a threat too because Paul George – yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Once again, I don't really want to talk about Collins because that situation is weird to me. Um. And then, so the, if I'm this thought, I pro- obviously, if I'm the Clippers, I want to get rid of Eric Gordon, Terrence Mann, and Bones Highland over Paul George, but whatever. What I think the most realistic one is, is probably the Heat one, because I, I think he was linked to it when they first said something about Trey getting traded. Um, and if I'm Miami, I'm keeping Tyler Hero, and I'm getting rid of Kyle Lowry, which is the only difference besides the 2029 first round pick in that. You, you trade Duncan Robinson regardless, and then you trade the 2027 first round pick. I'm keeping Tyler Hero in that situation, though. It just doesn't make sense. Even if he has for some reason, which I don't think he would, but for some reason has to go back to the bench. That's the best six man in the league right now. So you take that. Um, The last thing I got here is they have a lot of nice young guys, right? I think you – they just – I don't even know what they got. I think they got Sadiq Bey for like – Chump change. I think they got him for second round picks or something. Let's see who the guy, the guys. Also, I don't know if he's relevant with the Hawks. If any Hawks fans are watching this, um, get rid of Jared Culver. Okay, bye bye. Uh, don't re-sign Derek Favors. Um, I actually I take that back though because he's really he's probably the guy with the most veteran and most like playoff experience possibly. So maybe you can. On a vet min. Um, I don't know who this Vit Credici guy is, but I don't even know why he's making money if he's not playing for you guys. Um, there's a lot of guys that are making money right now that I don't know why they are. Uh all around the league, not just with the Hawks. But honestly, all right, so overall, they gotta make the decision to trade Trey Young and or John Collins. And like I don't I don't know if you start over if you trade Trey Young though. I don't I don't I honestly don't know what you do. I think you keep him just because I don't think you can get back what you want for him. I don't know. It's weird. Like, because like I said, if you do the fucking heat trade with Kyle, like what do you really get with Kyle Lowry and Duncan Robinson? You know what I'm saying? Like that's not really equivalent to Trey Young. So I, I don't really know what you do with that. Um, so I think you keep him. John Collins is another tough one. I don't really know. He's making 25 mil a year. That just doesn't make any sense to me. No offense to him. It, it, yeah. Um, 
damn. Uh, Murray's on a good contract now, but he's going to next. Not well. Yeah. This year coming up after this year coming up, he's going to be a free agent. So he's going to be either looking to go somewhere else to get a better offer here. So I don't know, but they have a lot of, I, I'm confident in what the I don't I don't really want to say I'm confident what the Hawks are doing, but because they had a really bad year, but they did pick it up at the end of the year though, winning two games against the Celtics. Nobody expected them to do that, so I kind of I kind of dig that. So my biggest thing is their biggest decision they need to make is do they run it back and maybe pick up a free agent here or there and drop some other guys, or do they splash big and trade Capella, trade a young or trade Collins or do all three. I don't know why you would, but I'm just saying go go crazy. They they really gotta either stay low right now, keep the keep the core, see what they can do, make a few moves in free like low grade free agency moves like bench guys and stuff like that. See what you can do because they got some good bench players with AJ Griffin, Sadiq Bay, Jalen Johnson, Okongo still coming off the bench. So I, I don't hate it. Um and I mean they got Bogdanovich coming off the bench too. So I think so yeah. So that's what I think the Hawks should do this offseason. Um, once again, I don't really know too much about salary cap stuff. I don't know too much about the – I'm going to try to learn, so, I, so I'll be a little bit more knowledgeable on that. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you look out for the next video. It'll be on the Boston Celtics. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you comment down below what um, you think the Hawks should do. Uh, if you liked anything – if you agree with anything I said, or if you got more ideas, let me know. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and deuces.